Hello and welcome to SDN Tech Forum. In this video, I'm going to show you a very cool feature uh, which is available with Cisco switches, especially Cat 9K switches, starting release 16.12, uh, 16 um, which is how you can manage your Cisco devices or Cisco switches using web interface. The web interface is really not a new feature within Cisco, but it was not that mature. But now with 16.12 and Cat 9K new chip, uh, new chips and advanced uh, memory, you can see that how easy and how exciting it is to manage your switch uh, uh, switches using the web interface. So how you can access the web interface is let's log into the switch CLI and enable HTTPS to access the web, to get the web prompt. I'll show you what switch it is and what version I'm running. Show version. You can see that this is a C9348 port switch. I'm running 1612S. To get access web interface, you need to enable your HTTP uh, server on switch itself. So I have done that. This is like just three lines. <clears throat> so you need to have IP HTTP server enabled, IP HTTP uh, authentication local enabled. And if you wish to use uh, IP HTTP uh, as HTTPS, then enable secure server also. These three line of command, all you need to enable the web interface. And now let's go and log into the web interface. As you can see that I have already typed uh, HTTPS and the IP address, and I'm going to log in using my local username and password defined for this. And here it pulls out my switch, the web UI for my switch. And if you have seen my previ uh, a previous video of uh, 9800, the UI looks more or less uh, same because 9800 uh, was again running on a, a 9300 switch itself. That is why there is similarity between the UI. So when you log in to your web UI, the first thing what you are know, uh, uh, by default, you get uh, plays into the dashboard. So in dashboard, you can see it gives you a very high level overview of what is going uh, inside your switch. So you can see your CPU and memory graph. Uh, you can see what, what is the temperature right now uh, in the closet where the switch is sitting and then system information. So you can see the host name, how, how long the device is up, what is the current device time, device type, uh, how, how it is booted and if the FIPS uh, is enabled or not. And also it gives you the last reload reason. You can also see the PoE, since this is a PoE switch, you can see the PoE power consumption. Uh, so very, a very, uh, very good um, overview of what is going inside the switch. Now you can start digging into uh, it. The second view is switch view. Let's show you all the switch ports and then it will show you like uh, which ports are connected, which ports are not connected. So you can see that uh, uh, from this view. If it is a stack switch, you can see all the stack member, etc. Uh, within overview dashboard, you can actually dig into advanced CPU view or advanced memory view. These views are also available under monitoring, but uh, let's first check here. So if you go to advanced memory view, you can see the inventory like, wow, what, it, it's just like the show output you are seeing it on your screen, which is like very easy to uh, uh, vi visualize, right? So it will tell you what are my SFPs connected, what are my ports connected, what is the power supply and etc. In within memory utilization, you can actually go and see control plane and you can export this data as well. And uh, it can also give you a memory dump. So it's basically showing you all the processes paid for which mm, your, your switch is utilizing memory. So, and, and the good thing is, the cool thing is you can actually export it to Excel and uh, 
how do you do it later on so <clears throat> this was from dashboard uh, the next tab which we are going to see is a monitoring tab so there are like basically the four tabs here if you exclude dashboard monitoring that mean it is all your show commands configuring that mean you can actually uh, do configuration if you don't know the CLI or you are not comfortable with CLI you can do the configuration from web UI administration is all about the switch administration that means uh, setting up the clock setting up the host name management connections uh, even the software upgrade those things you can do it from um, web UI and troubleshooting uh, it is a very handy uh, sub uh, cool um, uh, utilities available here like you can do your trace route your ping you can actually use a wireshark capture uh, in troubleshooting and you can also run the core dumps and all other things we will look at each tab one by one um, and uh, see how useful it is so the first thing what you would like to the first tab what we like to check is monitoring within monitoring you can see that there is a general and then services services is a more granular related to servicing uh, but general tabs within monitoring like the cdp it is going to list all my cdp neighbors so i don't have to go to uncli and check i can check from here uh, i have switches connected if i have any dscp if my switch is working as dscp server and i have dscp client uh, connected i can see all the clients here you can also check all your ports so it is showing you all the ports belong, which belong to the switch, whether physical, logical, uh, like a VLAN interface, physical interface, and their status. So you can see what is the status, what VLAN they are assigned to, and if there is any TXRX uh, traffic going on. A very, very cool uh, feature. Uh, and if you're running STP, uh, spanning tree uh, protocol, it will tell you that what VLAN is VLAN is configured and what is the bridge priority uh, for them and if if this switch is a root or some some other switch is root. Check system tab. Within system tab again you can see all the inventory, memory utilization, CPU utilization, what we were seeing in the dashboard. Now let's go to configuration tab. So within configuration tab you see there are mm, subset of tools like there is a interface where you can configure your logical and physical interface there you can configure layer two properties of the interface then you can actually configure the routing protocol uh, today you can uh, configure eigrp ospf and static routing then you can have uh, define your security uh, acls tacax uh, uh, other things so a lot of cool things you can actually uh, configure uh, let me show you the start with interfaces so logical interface if you come here you can see that you can actually uh, i have loopback zero defined if i want to add another loopback or something i can add my loopback addresses here and it's very easy to add uh, i can say loopback 100 give it a description administrate what you want if you want to assign it to any vrf you can assign it to the vrf and then what ip address you want to uh, assign IPv4 or IPv6 and put the IP addresses and say apply to device but I'm not going to apply any uh, IP addresses another type of logical interface is your port channel so you can add your port channel interfaces um, and then you can actually select the port numbers that what kind of uh, which uh, uh, physical port should be part of this logical port channel and then you can say which VLAN you want to allow so everything you can do via UI the next thing is uh, layer 2 so if you want to define any SVIs uh, you can add SVI if you want to define any VLANs you can add VLANs uh, and then assign port to those VLANs so it's, it's, it makes things very very simple for anybody to um, configure uh, let's come back to routing protocol so if you want to configure uh, routing let's select eigrp you can always say add and then it will tell you that this is so choose the advance because advance is more close to uh, all the it will present all the parameters so you can define your virtual ins uh, instance 
address family if it is a vrf or it is a unica unica is that mean global put a router id what network you want to define do you want to enable split horizon what interface is you want to use variants and all those things and one cool thing is look enable best practices so it it doesn't only configure but it gives you the suggestion that uh, you should enable this best practices when you configure certain routing protocol so that's really really powerful and cool feature in my opinion and if you have some any concern regarding these parameters you don't understand what are they then uh, you can always come back to help this will pull out the ui help and you can go to that section configure ei grp and then it's going to tell you explain everything like what is the virtual instance what you should enter there what should be the outgoing interface what does it mean to select stuff and all those things so very very powerful uh, feature i would say uh, the help is very extended uh, well feel free to use it anywhere when you feel stuck so now i don't have any routing protocol configured but i do have static routing configured you can see my stat route is here and if i want to add additional uh, see ip routing is enabled this is my static routing which is a default route configured and if i want to add additional routes i can add routes simply just like um, any routing protocol so configuration tab is very useful <coughs> it also give you iox uh, a local manager which is a, a development client to uh, to connect to your uh, uh, switch itself and uh, run any uh, if you are want to run any application hosting you can run that uh, now let's go back to administra uh, administration tab which is one of the major tab here so the first thing is command line interface you can actually launch uh, run commands from web ui you don't have to connect to the device itself so you can see that yeah, i have exec and configure two level of commands so if it is a exec level command that means any show command i can run it from here show version and then just say uh, see this is presenting me all the outputs and everything it's amazing you can clear it if you want to run again show ver uh, run command you can actually copy it or if it is a multiple commands you can simply export them so it will be downloaded to your local machine a really uh, cool feature device you can set device administration like um, the management connection what is the host name if you want to define any banner uh, this is by default a management interface um, for cat 9k you can assign ip address and mtu uh, other things here uh, if you want to configure your ftp or uh, tftp settings you can configure your tftp tftp server here uh, again if this is this switch is working as a dscp server you can define dscp pool you can configure dns uh, name servers so you can add your dns uh, i have a dns con configured uh, if you want to add additional DNS, you can configure it here. Uh, one very cool feature is licensing. So now you know that Cisco moved to smart licensing model as, uh, starting 1610 release. And that means you need to register your devices to a smart account. And from there, you can consume the licenses. So and that that is done via register with C, C, CCSM and this is the real power of web ui if you want to do a cssm configuration within uh, cli you will feel uh, that it's really complicated or it needs advanced level of cli knowledge but look how simple it is here so i right now it is showing my licensing status that i have smart licensing enabled but it is not registered because it is not registered with cssm uh, mostly because i don't have uh, internet connectivity right now but if i have internet connectivity and i configure it uh, all you have to do is like select whether you have direct internet or you have a um, smart satellite that is a air gap solution uh, and then uh, define your dns and everything go to next and provide your uh, uh, and it will try to register to the cssm so it's, it's very easy uh, and very automated uh, it, it makes 
this complex licensing thing very simple and easy to use so i really like this uh, licensing feature next is backup and restore so this is part of management if you want to do any file management like if you want to copy configurations uh, transfer more tftp or, or you can actually use sttp that means you can backup the configuration uh, uh, directly to your your file and if you want to uh, say i want to configure copy from device configuration file i want to start up config i want to download it to my local machine i don't have any i don't need any tftp connection or anything i can simply use sttp and download the startup config locally to my file and in the same way if i want to copy any device to uh, copy any file to the device i can also use that uh, using sttp or uh, tftp uh, any protocol but i really like this sttp option here because it cut down on uh, you having a ftp or tftp server running uh, so it's really quick uh, another way is uh, file manager it's gonna show you what is your storage i have a, a, a flash store here you can see what is running in the store flash all my flash files and if you want to upload anything to the flash i can simply select and upload it on in the flash so that uh, you can configure your netconf http https you can configure your snmp you can see that i have snmp mode enabled what is my community string if i want to add an additional community string all those things i can do it from here and what are my snmp host I, you can see that i have two snmp server configured power management you can see like uh, what is the power available how much the power is in use and all those things you can you can actually reload your box from web ui and you can set up time you can set up users you can i have one user if i want to connect another user i can define another user and give them the required privileges software management this is very important i want to show you so uh, time on time we want to upgrade our uh, devices and to upgrade the device we generally co copy all the mm, uh, software from tftp and then issue the new boot command uh, everything you can do it from web ui and it is very simple and also uh, cisco uh, 1612 starting 1611 or 1612 ios xe has smooth kind of uh, uh, feature that means it is a incremental patch patches it's not entire soft software upgrade but it's a incremental patches which you can apply on device to fix some of the bugs so that also you can do from here and if something goes wrong you can always roll back that means it you can revert back to the earlier uh, software now the final tab is a troubleshooting tab and troubleshooting tab is a set of utilities uh, which you can use to troubleshoot your uh, uh, problems or uh, uh, device uh, going in devices so if you click on log you can see all the web uh, syslogs here you can manage syslog server that means you can add additional uh, syslog servers you can change their uh, log level settings all those things you can change and also you can download all the logs you can see i can download everything here uh, in my local machine uh, license log if it is license related you can also download them now let's go back so this is all about log management the second cool thing is uh, packet capture so there is an inbuilt wireshark uh, uh, available so you can select like put your capture name what kind of filter you want do you want to capture ipv4 ipv6 and do you want to monitor control plane what should be the buffer size what how long you want to run this um, and if you want to select on any particular interface then you can also do that right and and this way you apply to device and your packet capture will start running and it will run for the duration you define here and then you can actually go back and uh, download the, that capture once the capture is completed it will reflect here and then you can download the second thing is ping and trace routes so you can uh, 
run any ping from the uh, to the destination what source you want to use you can select your source interface and then you can define your destinations here uh, and you can also do a trace route so all those things you can do using a web ui you can save your configuration on the top here you can see you can save configuration you can uh, set your preferences that where what can be your uh, landing page what will be the grid size and all those things so the default parameter looks good here and finally if you can refresh your screen and if you want you can log out from here so clicking on log out so i believe you really enjoyed this session and uh, this is very uh, cool and powerful feature and the sdm has uh, came up a long way from a fragile web UI to a full-fledged web UI and I encourage everyone to try try it out and you know, familiarize yourself with um, um, Cisco or uh, Sexy Web UI and use it more and more. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.